Hello, this is chapter 12. In this chapter, we'll be studying aggregate supply and the Phillips curve relationship. And we are in lecture number one, where we're going to do an overview of what's going on. Well, lecture number one, of course, is the overview. Lecture number two, we're going to talk about the sticky price model. So, um, well, I'll talk a little bit more about that on the next slide. Um, lecture number three, we're going to talk about a slightly alternative model to um, aggregate supply, short run aggregate supply called the imperfect information model. Um, lecture number two and lecture number three go together fairly well. Uh, we're going to stick mostly with our thoughts on the sticky price model for this class, but both are quite interesting models of short run aggregate supply. Finally, in lecture number four, we're going to turn our attention from the aggregate supply aggregate demand model to the inflation unemployment and that relationship what's called the Phillips curve. So that's a brief overview. Let me give you a little bit of um, introduction into the chapter. Essentially what we've done so far is assume that P was stuck in the short run. That is we had a completely horizontal short run aggregate supply curve. Well that may not be the most realistic um, expectation. Actually, what we might think of is that some prices are stuck. Like, for example, if I'm a restaurant and I print a menu, well, the only way I can change my price is if I go in and I reprint my menu. So there's some menuing cost, right? That's the actual, we call menuing costs so the actual physical cost of changing the communication of prices. So if it's a grocery store, you put new price tags on. Or if you don't put new price tags, use those cool barcodes like everybody uses today. You have to rekey in the price into the system that matches the barcode with the price, right? That's, those, that's a cost. There's a real cost to changing that. And so that's part of what keeps prices sticky. Another part of what might keep prices sticky is if there's a contract involved. Like, for example, a labor contract. So if I um, hire an employee... I don't get to tell. I don't get to index their wages to um, inflation and have it go up and down as I as I want it to. I have to say, okay, I'm going to pay you this much, and for a period of time, that's how much I pay them, right? So it's it's a little bit stuck, and it's hard for that to change. But other prices, like for example, um, commodity prices. You know, what's the price of corn? What's the price of wheat? Stuff like that fluctuate all the time. They can go up and down very easily. They're not stuck at all. So we have some prices that are stuck, some prices that are not stuck at all, and some prices that are a little bit in between. We want to take that into account. So we now consider two prominent models of short run aggregate supply. The sticky price model, that's the one we're primarily going to focus on, and then the imperfect information model. Um, and I think both are quite interesting. The imperfect information model might be might be a little better uh, description of how the world works. I'm not sure. Um, both are quite interesting and um, make good predictions about what we see in reality. So we'll continue uh, by jumping in with the sticky price model in lecture two.